I want to take you on a trip back in time a little bit. Back to a time when dance mania was sweeping its way through parts of Europe. And we're not talking about disco fever in the 1970s. Instead, we're going back to a period stemming from the 1370s to about the 18th century, when on separate occasions, a dancing frenzy created one of the strangest cases of mass hysteria we've ever seen. Today we're going to talk about Europe's bizarre cases of the dancing plague. What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. You got your boy Smash here. This is my fourth video in a series entitled History Strangest Events. This is where we talk about some of the weirdest, strangest, and most bizarre events in human history. From mass hysteria to cataclysmic natural phenomena, we want to take you on a trip through some of our forgotten past. So if you like what you see, don't forget to follow and smash that like button. And of course, hit the little bell icon so you're ready to go when my next video drops. Now I'm pretty sure everybody watching this video has danced before. Whether it was through formal training, a school dance, or a little shimmy shake with your bestie, it's something we've all gotten to experience. Some of us are good at it. And some of us are really bad at it. But under the right circumstances, dancing should be a lot of fun. But imagine a situation where once you started dancing, you couldn't stop. You would continue to juke and dip and twist for hours, even days on end. You would literally dance till you dropped, possibly even till you died. Now that sounds absurd, right? But the crazy thing is, this has actually happened before. And on multiple occasions throughout Europe, from the first documented case in 1374 to the most recent, at some point in the mid-18th century. In Europe, they called it the Dancing Plague, or Dancing Epidemic. It involved groups of people, all ages and genders, but a majority women, dancing uncontrollably, unable to stop themselves. They would dance until they collapsed with exhaustion, or even died of heart failure. Now I know this brings up a lot of questions. Like why did they start dancing to begin with? And why couldn't they stop? What would cause groups of people to dance their way to their literal graves? And because there are so many different cases, with different apparent causes and results, the answer still isn't clear. There are many different factors that may have played a role. Most that have studied the dancing plague admit it's one of the most insane cases of mass hysteria that we've ever seen. The first documented cases of dance mania occurred in 1374 in Aachen, in the Holy Roman Empire, or modern-day Germany, and spread to several towns along the Rhine River. There were many different triggers that may have started some of these dancing fits, the most common of which were crop failures from local harvests leading to food scarcity. The stress and lack of nutrients may have combined to cause some cases of the epidemic, but other cases can be linked to religious ceremonies and even political events. Some believed it was started by a religious cult, leading to some victims being exorcised. In Italy, they call it tarantism because they thought it was caused by being bitten by a tarantula or scorpion. They believed it could be cured by music to accompany the dancer. Perhaps the most famous case of dance mania occurred in Strasbourg in 1518. It was dubbed St. Anthony's Dance, as it was caused by a disease known as St. Anthony's Fire, because it caused the victim to quiver uncontrollably. It's thought that this was triggered by a mix of food poisoning and stress-induced mass hysteria. It started when a lady named Frau Trofea stepped into the street and started dancing. She was unable to stop until she collapsed from exhaustion. Once rested, she started dancing again. This continued for days, until she had at least a few dozen other people infected. Political and religious leaders tried to open up music halls and have music playing to accompany the dancers with hopes that this would help. They even went as far as to hire professional dancers to dance with the afflicted. But all this did was allow the dancing contagion to spread, as at its peak it included more than 400 people. Now another question that normally comes up is why didn't anybody try to stop it? Well they did. Kinda. Because nothing was really known about this dancing plague, there really wasn't any way to treat it. So first they tried to pray it away, but that didn't work because it never does. Focus. 
Am I wrong, though? No. All right, then. Mind your own business. Watch it. So when prayer didn't work, some people tried to isolate dancers, similar to how they treated the Black Plague. Others tried to tie dancers down, or even throw them in the ocean. Most attempts failed, as victims would likely dance until they collapsed. In all, over a thousand people have been infected with the dancing plague throughout the centuries. It led to hundreds of deaths throughout Western Europe, and even today it still baffles historians, doctors, and scientists. But at least today, we do have a name for it. They call it Choreomania. Choreomania, as defined by the American Psychological Association, is an uncontrollable urge to dance, especially in a frenzied, convulsive manner. Choreomania is a term that's also been used to include laughing fits. And we do still see it on an individual basis even today, but never in the large numbers we saw in Europe all those centuries ago. And this really got me thinking about what it would be like if something like this happened today. Especially with the way that social media, and yes, even YouTube, has changed the way we view things, would anybody even take it seriously? I mean, you saw how we handled a much more serious pandemic. Would they call this a hoax or say it's fake news? Go on. I mean, there's already stories about apps like TikTok causing mass psychosis, making people think they have Tourette syndrome. Oh, it's real. Look it up. Now, this is probably one of the more wide-known topics we've covered on my channel, but it still leaves us with so many questions. How did these dancing fits start? What, what caused them? Why were they able to seemingly infect so many people, like a case of the flu? If it happened on such a large scale today, is it something modern medicine would be able to pinpoint in our bodies and maybe even treat? Or was it all just mental? Just a crazy case of mass hysteria? Jump into the comments below and let me know what you think about Europe's dancing plagues. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to follow and smash that like button. And of course hit the little bell icon so you'll be ready to go for my next video. If you don't want to wait till next week, you can always follow me on Twitch and TikTok at SmashAdams28. And come back next week when we talk about a strange trial in a town called Salem. Until then, get smashed, everyone.